Hello and welcome to Tsunami Books. Uh, today we have author Susie Przyanski with us. She's signing copies of her books Fruit of the 60s and Brigadoon of the 60s. And uh, we're going to be asking her a couple of questions. Um, welcome, Susie. Hi, Valerie. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, so, on, in your bio, I know you did a lot of interviewing for the content in these books. And can you tell us a little bit about the structure of each of the books? Uh, yeah, the, the first one has to do with the very start of the fair and, uh, and goes through, and goes through the uh, first 11 years, more or less, all the way to 1981, or 12 years. And then the next book picks up from there. And what happens is I did more than 300 interviews with help from other people, but I did a lot of those myself. And I found that there was this breaking point of the people from the very beginning and the people that came in later. And that's how I, I ended up, when I started with Through the 60s, I had divided them out, and then I ran out, I had so many pages I had to stop and figure out a place to start again for the second book. What was one of your favorite uh, stories from all these interviews? Or maybe, maybe one that didn't end up in the book even, I don't know. Oh Can gosh. <laughs> There's quite a few really, really good stories. Um, <laughs> I gotta say that, that my favorite, because I, I followed through on Brigadier in the 60s, was interviewing Tom Noddy and learning so much about vaudeville at, and getting to know the vaudeville family at the fair was just so much fun for me. I've been always a fan. And so he worked with me pretty closely, uh, getting the facts right, and I really, really appreciated that. And it was a pleasure to get to know someone fun like that, that I admired for all these years on stage. Um, other people, though, are just everyday people have surprised me what they knew and how they connected with each other. And in many interviews, I'd get a spark of aha or shiver going at my back because I heard that story from someone else at a different angle. And they, the information connected and they worked together. And all that was really fun. How long have you been involved with the Oregon Country Fair? Uh, I first started going when we moved here in 84. And I didn't start, um, I started. Uh, I came in 89 to overnight, staying with a friend, and in 90, uh, my partner Floyd, my husband, got a job on the Info Crew, and I joined Info Crew in 93. Which crew? Info. Oh, okay. So that's where I started learning a lot already, <laughs> just to, to, had to know a lot about the fair to answer a lot of questions. So. <clears throat> what do you look forward to every year at fair, oh. you personally? <laughs> Right now I'd say the hugs, because I miss those the most. <laughs> but the music and the people and, and the chance encounters and the educational, I don't know, the most is so hard. It's, it's just, just like the books, I couldn't stop. There's just too many good things about the fair to stop with one, which is what makes it so magical. Is that why you decided to write these books? Yeah, and the stories that people told behind the scenes were so fascinating, I, I, and no one had written them down, and I wanted to be sure that that history was, was captured, because there's a lot of good information about cooperation, and how people tried to create society that's different than the mainstream, and I really think those stories were important to bring forward, and especially in today, and how our society is now. It gives me a lot of hope that we've been doing this a long time, and. We have a new generation coming and new generations, and we all believe that we're going to keep we're going to keep working on this good stuff. And before we started filming, you and I were talking about fair being such a special and emotional place to be, you know, and and a place that people really feel at home at and free to be who they are. And sometimes they don't have that any other place in their lives. Yeah. And so they look forward to this yeah. event. You know, every year, all year long, we look forward to it. And as everyone knows, last year we were unable to meet. So can you talk about the online fair a little bit? Yeah. The where I people can find more information or more community about the fair? Yeah. The weekend of the fair, uh, the only thing we had was online. And I'm not an online person at all. But I tried it, and I really got a good taste of, of, of fair by seeing the people I know and love and seeing some of the same rituals like 
Michael Almagroso doing the Ohm Circle by himself <laughs> for, to call the community village together. And, and things like that just, just help, help me kind of cope with not being at the fair. And there are a lot of magical moments with entertaining that, that isn't on there now, but there is a lot of stuff that's still on the Oregon Country Fair side. There's some entertainment, and there's some of the community village. Um, and there's also, you can get in touch with different vendors if you're interested in any merchandise. They have merchandise information online. It's OregonCountryFair.org. And you click on uh, the page. I don't remember the name of it. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's uh, got a whole lot of stuff about uh, a lot of um, what am I trying to say? Videos, films of what they did that weekend is still available if you haven't seen them. So that's the point there. And and um, hopefully, if we can't gather this year, this coming year, um, something like that will happen again, and maybe a better because that was our first time to do it, and mm -hmm. always the first time. There's a lot of bugs to be worked out. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming to Tsunami Books and signing your books, The Fruit of the '60s and Brigadoon of the '60s. And uh, yeah, we have signed copies here at Tsunami Books. And thanks so much for coming, Susie. Thank you for having me. Thank you all.